I need to try and explain something in, in layman's terms as simple as absolute possible and I'm struggling. I get a lot of emails of people asking what gauge why they, 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 they the fuck. I get a lot of emails of people saying that they fitted the top quality batteries and they're not performing exactly how they're supposed to, they're not getting the mileage, they're not getting the current, they're not getting anything like they're supposed to get and everything gets hot and 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 there's something wrong somewhere and 99% and of the time I found out it's actually the way they built it. Here's two thicknesses of wire. Now, if I was to get, we'll say, six inches of that, that's, that's about six inches in it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So if we've got 72 volts going into that and 72 volts going into that, these are completely separate circuits, they're not connected together like that. And I was to draw, we'll say 10 amps for argument's sake, I was to draw 10 amps through that, the output will be, we'll say 70 volts, this will be about 40 volts. Uh, this would get hot, this wouldn't. So obviously when you're building anything, the thicker the wire or the thicker the nickel or, or you know, if you're building batteries, the better. Obviously you've got a cost against uh, performance, you, you've got to weigh that up. But generally speaking, the thicker you can use, the better. When people are testing battery cells, um, be it Samsung 25Rs or, or LG HG2s, although this is a clone, You've got to have the right testing procedures and the right testing equipment to actually do the job properly. If you haven't, you're not going to get true results. Now, I found out also that people are testing the, the Litter Carla 26650s. They're using a piece of crap tester and they're not getting the capacity out of them. Now, here I've got two, what is it, the DP, DL24s. That's an old version, that's a new version. The old version has got very thin wire which induces a lot of resistance. This one's got far beefier wire and it's also got a voltage sense on it. I've got two Samsung 25Rs here which are identical. I've tested the capacity of these independently so I tested that one then I tested that one and the capacity is identical, the voltage sag is identical everything is identical. So I built this test rig just to prove my point or to show you or try and show you exactly what happens. This obviously on the left is the older version so if I connect these so this one only uses two wires for the current drain and it also uses the same two wires to test or measure the battery voltage so it knows when to actually stop and to say that's how, that's how much capacity it's got. This one's got four wires whereby the main current draw is the thick one which goes on there and the positive goes on there and then you put the voltage sense as close to the battery as you possibly can. So that's going to go there. Now these have been, I'm going to turn the lights off in a minute so you can see this, these have been matched perfectly together, they're calibrated perfectly down to a couple of millivolts uh, and the temperature sensors have as well, everything's been calibrated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 10 amps on this, I'm going to put 10 amps on this, I'm going to start them at exactly the same time and then we'll analyse the results when it's been done. So as you can see, they're reading near enough the same, the temperature's reading the same, the cut-off time, everything, the current's exact, the current at the top, which you can see is reading at 10 amps. So I'm going to start these two running now, and then we'll come back when it's finished, if we can get them running at the same time, because I can't bloody well see anything now. There. Now these have settled down, you'll see that the left one uh, was 1766 milliamps, that one, 
and that one is 2405. This is all to do with the resistance of the wire being tested. So the thinner the wire, the higher the resistance and in effect the less the capacity you're going to get out of the batteries. You'll notice that the left one has actually the voltage has come back up. It's all to do with the voltage sag because of the resistance of the wires. The test equipment's near enough the same. No it ain't. It's nothing like it is it? Dickhead. The point I'm trying to make is the thicker the wire the less the chance that you've got of any losses, any heat build up, any voltage sag, any resistance causing problems with the battery or any, any loss of power. Because the more you draw the more heat is generated and the more resistance on the wires. So instead of using 10 AWG, if you use 8 AWG, you, re you reduce the resistance of the power wires. And the same goes with the nickel strips. If you use 0.2 mil instead of 0.15 mil, you reduce the resistance in, in the links, the series links and the parallel links. So in effect, you get more power out of it. These batteries are identical. There is no difference between them. And I know the capacity is exactly the same. But according to these two, they are completely different. Now I hope that explains the difference or... or f <laughs> <laughs> I'm f***ing shit at this. I'm not going to dark. Yes. Because I've been videoing that. That proves that people are stupid. Yes, yes. It's plainly obvious, isn't it? I know, honestly. With the flashing light. Even I can see it. I know. You're going to be on video now. I can't Sorry. see your face though, you've got a face mask. Chloe's got a face mask on. So I hope this explains the reasoning why you need... <laughs> <laughs> Just for a laugh. Well, no, I took the LEDs out of this because I don't like them. Here are the LEDs connected to a bench power supply. <laughs> Can you tell what I'm going to do? <laughs> We're currently on one and a half volts and they're not illuminated. So they come on at the red ones come on first at 1.7 volts. At 2 volts the green ones just, just start coming on. And then the other ones. Oh that's weird. Ain't that weird? Anyway, that's at 2.6 volts. So I'm now going to put it up to the 5 volts that they normally run at. So that's at 5 volts. I wonder what it takes before they pop. <laughs> 6 volts, 6.5 volts, 7.5 volts, 8 volts, 9 volts, 10 volts. 11 volts, 12 volts, 13 volts, 14 volts, 15 volts, 16 volts, 17 volts, 18 volts, 19 volts, 20 volts, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, I don't like this. <laughs> 28, 29, 30 volts, 31. 32, they're getting dimmer now. There's smoke coming off him. Focus. Ooh. 32 volts before they start smoking. And they still work. Well, that was interesting. Hopefully now you can understand that length really does matter when it comes to testing batteries or when you're building an e-bike or, or an e-scooter or whatever you're using. You really do need to make the cable runs as short as possible, number one, and also overkill is always best. The thicker the cable, the less voltage loss you're going to get, the less resistance that you're going to get, and the more you're actually going to get out of your batteries the run time's going to be greater, yet they're going to get hotter. 
but I'd prefer to have the heat in the batteries than in the cables. So keep the run short, keep the cables thick and everything will be fine.